Join me today as I do a bit of a follow-up to uh, the video about the Star Wars TV shows and where it's all gone wrong with the question, can Star Wars even be saved if it's still in Disney's control? This is the Geek Ball channel. My name is Bobby. And uh, this is going to be a, as I said in the intro there, a follow up to a previous video where I talked about the Star Wars TV shows and talked to where I feel everything just went wildly wrong and how I would at least attempt to course correct. Uh, so I received uh, a reply down in the, the comments section. And uh, to credit where credit is due, this was from Thomas Jones 4570 and he commented on something that I, I didn't address in the video and uh, he laid out that his opinion uh, his comment was more than this just to be clear is that uh, in his opinion that it can't be saved as long as Disney owns it because they just treat it as a source of content and don't give a crap about the actual IP itself. Now, I think he might be on to something. Um, so, obviously my thesis that I put forward as far as the trying to right the ship was assuming that Disney was going to retain ownership. Now, uh, I think he is right in that one of the two quickest paths to attempting to fix things is to take it out of Disney's control. Uh, I mean, you know, Disney's selling it out. I mean, like some entity being like, oh, that's mine now. Like, the business doesn't work that way. Uh, the courts occasionally, whenever they decide to get really grabby and screwy, but not business. Um, so, yes, uh, that would presumably lead to a massive shift in things. Uh, could be for the better, could be for the worse, don't know. Uh, probably worth the gamble at this point, though, as long as the other entity has sufficient funding and doesn't just plan on sitting on it and farming it out. So, that is one of the two ways. The other being that Kathleen Kennedy, probably Bob Iger, and most of the creatives uh, all need to go because... Either, either they're not willing, either, either there are top-down directives that they're not willing to stand up to, or that they get fired if they do stand up to them, or the creatives themselves are legitimately proposing all these bad ideas, but no matter what, it's, it's not working. So, uh, so yeah, uh, to his point... I do think that would be a very quick way to start changing things. Uh, I don't know that it's the only way, and this and I, I'm going to be totally upfront here. This could just me being naive. This could be me being overly optimistic, even though I have no real reason to be. Uh, but I look at a handful of the products Disney has made with Star Wars were good. You know, Rogue One was good. I mean, obviously, it's my opinion on this, but, you know, Rogue One was good. Andor was good. Uh, Solo was not terrible. Uh, it was, it was, it's infinitely watchable. It's not an insult that it exists or anything like that. But it's kind of close to what I've commented before that Star Wars should be grand and epic and great. Star Wars should never just be okay. And that's getting really, really close to that. It's okay. But, uh, you know, maybe just the fact that I despise the, the trilogy that Disney made so much that Solo looks better to me because that, that could very well be a possibility. So, against that backdrop, you know, I'm stuck with well, I see that they have the capacity to make good Star Wars products. Or, or, you know, or someone there does. 
And like the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, they were good. The third one was less quality. Ahsoka could have been a lot better, but again, at least it wasn't an insult to my intelligence to watch it. Uh, like, which is which is a very low bar. Okay, I, I'm I'm crystal clear on this. I'm not saying Ahsoka's great. I'm not saying that like I'm you know doing cartwheels just waiting for a season two to start or anything. But it's like you know if Disney's going to keep pumping stuff out, that's at least watchable. Uh, I have a lot of problems with it. We did we did all kinds of videos about it, where we spend most of the videos complaining about the show. You know, but it's still not as bad as the Last Jedi, which again. I'm aware is like the lowest of low bars. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, either either taking out, sorry, firing the 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 top staff, and that would have to include Kathleen Kennedy. It'd have to, it'd have to include Bob Iger, because ultimately he's the one who oversees all this. And he's also ultimately just destroying Disney in general. So that would just be a, a win for, you know, Western civilization in general. But, and then he can go on his doomed political campaign. Uh, so it's just, it's not that I, I want to be clear that's not that I'm like, oh, it has to stay at Disney. You know, that's the best chance for savior. No, no. Know, someone with sufficient funding and ideas and someone who can at least talk to George Lucas and like even if you don't implement his ideas at least listen to them and understand where the man is coming from because he created Star Wars he he has that he has the eye the knack he, he knows what you know what works and what doesn't and so, you know, he's, he's got, you know, the insight as the creator. And again, you don't have to follow all of it, but you have to at least listen to it and understand it. So that would be a necessity. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't, the current crew, no, no, it, it, well, the, those things I said, they'll never happen. Uh, they'll, they'll go on to make. You know, like Andor Season 2 might still be good. Never know. Uh, I have no thoughts on the Skeleton Crew. I haven't even watched the trailer for it. And, you know, any other things like Ahsoka Season 2 doesn't even start filming until next year. You know, who knows who will actually still be at Lucasfilm and Disney at that point. So, it's, uh, it's, I, I, I don't know, again, I don't know who they're, could do something constructive because you know you've got I, I've seen enough now and I hate to hate to be super critical of uh, of other people who I think are legitimately fans like I think like Dave Filoni I think is actually a fan of Star Wars okay unlike some of the others who just look at it as a cash cow or something I think he is actually a fan of it's just that he's letting his personal fan fiction dictate what he does with the shows and movies and whatnot. And that's that's where it's bad. Because the only person that has that right to do that is George Lucas. Because it is his personal fan fiction. So anyone else starts doing that and you start focusing on other things that are less important. Other things that don't fit that you get to start shoehorning in. I mean, I think Ahsoka is a fine character, but she's not the center of the Star Wars universe. Okay? Um, I, I've, I've gone on in my other videos that I'll link to, you know, with my issues with the Ahsoka series. And I, I get, like all the others, it comes down to writing. But there were some things where it was clear. Now, again, the show was named Ahsoka, so I expected her to be the central character in that show. That's, that's fine. That's not what I mean. But there were things where it's like, you know, a competent person would have done X, Y, and Z. In particular, the whole like, hey, I've got these tapes of Anakin. I know Luke. I've met him. Maybe he wants the tapes of his dad giving Jedi advice. You know? 
just maybe. But instead, no, it's I'm the main character, so I'm going to hang on to him and, you know, whatever. <coughs> it's it's things like that. Um, but that, that's that's all side noise, okay? You know, then you had someone like John Favreau, I think it's Favreau, who, you know, created the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, and, you know, it's clear that he understood you know, the, his reach, he understood where he was setting things. He understood, you know, how to give it the, the vibe to look and sound and feel like star Wars to pick an era where he has free reign, you know, to fiddle with things, you know, in areas of the star Wars universe that aren't super well defined so that he's not going to conflict with lore or anything like that. And, you know, those, those were smart moves. You know, the people who made rogue one knew that essentially they were going in trying to make a war movie set in the Star Wars universe. And I think they largely succeeded. But, you know, again, they understood we've got to use a bunch of unknowns because we plan on killing them. And so, you know, it's 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 little things like that. And instead, what we have are people that are like, I've got to make my mark on Star Wars. You know, that, that's what you had with the Acolyte. That was the Acolyte through and through. That's why Darth Plagueis is in there. Because... Uh, Leslie Headland's like, well, he's never appeared on screen. He's going to appear on screen at my show, so I'll be forever linked to that. And it's like, it's, it's just so, so petty, you know, just so, so stupid. And people like that shouldn't be allowed anywhere near franchises. And let, you know, if they want to make one, go for it, you know, go, you know, go, go do your original production of your frozen meets kill bill you know let's let, let's see that divorce that from star wars and just just go make that movie and yeah so as long as those people and people like that are there which i'm pretty sure leslie headland's not going to be there from the sounds of things but uh you know as long as kathleen kennedy keeps okaying these things things aren't ever going to change I mean, through sheer volume, you're just going to have a few other things that actually work, you know, just, it, but it's going to be purely accidental. And that may even be the case with Rogue One and Andor. I don't think it is, you know, because the two products are linked, uh, because Andor is from Rogue One. So I think that Andor was definitely not a fluke. So... I, I have hopes for Andor Season 2, but that's about the only Star Wars product on the horizon I actually have hopes for. So, again, maybe I'm just hopelessly optimistic in that uh, someone at Disney will finally clean house and get rid of Kathleen Kennedy, get rid of, you know, people like Leslie Headland. Um, I actually uh, came across something earlier today about the uh, one of the main uh, the main editor or one of the main editors for the Star Wars line once Disney took over uh, was actually the person who was originally in charge of the Battletech Dark Age books under WizKids and apparently their opinion of the previous Battletech fiction was that it was written by Hacks and they had no interest in bringing in any of the old authors, uh, other than I think Stackpole wrote the initial book, if I recall correctly. But then it was a bunch of what, you know, quote, real sci-fi authors. And anyone who's read those books knows that it's not until some of the older authors came back around the 11th, 12th book, somewhere around there, that things actually turned around and got better. Um, I'm not saying those books were trash. The, I, I enjoyed most of the Dark Age books. But there was a definite notice. There's a definitely noticeable improvement of quality once that happened. So this person then eventually went on to be over the Star Wars books, and presumably was somewhat instrumental in the whole like, hey, let's toss out the whole EU because they were written by hacks. So I I, I think that's now in my mind that is a distinct possibility of what happened, which you know. I still think that was the single greatest mistake they made. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of rambling now. So uh, in response to the uh, presumably gentleman, I, I shouldn't 
you know, assume, but uh, with the name, I have to assume it's a gentleman. Uh, if, I'm, if you're not, let me know. Uh, first of all, thank you for the comment. Um, I did realize, you know, you didn't realize I didn't actually discuss that in the other video as far as ways to turn things around would be that just, you know, if Disney wasn't the IP holder anymore. And, you know, I Star Wars is the only one of the IPs that can really actually go anywhere because uh, it turns out there's not a huge fan base for resurrecting Willow. And I think Indiana Jones might be too intricately tied with Harrison Ford playing Indiana Jones to ever do anything else with the character. You know, because Harrison Ford's not going to live forever. So, as, as we unfortunately were just reminded of with James Earl Jones. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I, I think that uh, until either Disney no longer controls the IP or until there's a complete uh, shake-up at the top with basically everyone getting canned... And not just the Lucasfilm, it's got to go up to, to Iger in Disney. Because he ultimately approves all these things. So, and, and not in a, not in a hey, let's get someone else in here, but I'm going to secretly undermine them the entire time, and then return like he did to Bob Chapek. So, you know, that's that's what it's going to take to for any of those other ideas to ever take hold. Because without something like that, they can try the other things I recommended, and some of them might even work. Like, like if they, if Kathleen Kennedy could get out of her own way, and accept that other people have a far better grasp on what makes Star Wars work and what makes it popular, and hire people like that and let them do their thing and just sit back and then pretend to be a genius masterminding it all. That's all she would have to do, but she's not going to. Because if she were going to do that, she would have already done that. So, yeah. Uh, thank you again from... And I apologize, I don't know people's screen names. Uh, thank you again for Thomas Jones 4570 for inspiring this little discussion here. And, uh, yeah. Uh, that's about all I got. So, you know, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, if you saw the other video, I'm going to be the first one that's linked to here in this one. You know, let me know, do you think any of that could turn things around for star wars is it, is it dead are you one of those people that i see online like oh let it sit fallow for a decade and i'm like what the hell is that going to accomplish you know that that will achieve nothing if you don't actually make structural changes and if you do make the structural changes you don't have to let it sit fallow for a decade so i've just never understood that mindset it just it's it's not going to fix anything so uh plus you know none of us are getting any younger if Star Wars is going to turn around, I'd kind of like to live to see it. So, you know. Anyway, uh, like I said, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff to YouTube. Uh, comments and like, uh, comments and shares. I keep saying likes. Comments and shares are the, the best way to actually spread the channel if you're interested in helping us out. Uh, but otherwise, uh, just remember folks, the Force will be with you. Always.